You will have the polar bear problem, you will have the ignorance problem, because you lot are apparently ignorant, and uh, thirdly, the fact that you will all start hating each other um, because of the extreme cold having an effect. I hate him anyway. I was going to say, I hate him. Hatred is very real. You're behind someone, for instance, all day and every day, or beside them, and you start mentally hating them for the smallest possible thing. My main colleague over the last 20 years and good friend, Mike Stroud, uh, told me, um, sitting in a pub in the UK, that the year before when we were up by the pole, um, and he was travelling behind me, um, he spent that particular day planning how he was going to shoot me and where he was going to dump the body. You don't want to laugh about it, which I think you lot seem to be doing. OK, now, the, the polar bear issue, it's, I can't get whipped up about that, because every single night on the... Even George Bush is now saying there are no polar bears left, so the chances of running into one must be almost nil. No, yeah, not on the route you'll be going um, to the pole. There's lots of polar bears around there. Uh, they're not interested in us, though, are they? Sure. If they're very hungry, they will hunt anything which smells of blood, whether it's a seal or human. They will come from behind nearly always. And when they actually attack you uh, from a standing start, despite weighing, you know, over a tonne, um, they, they will go at the speed of an MGB accelerating. Then we moved on to frostbite, and Ranulf showed us being maybe this giving him a cuddle. OK, here is Resolute. We begin by going south very briefly, then we turn uh, west across this island, then we're going across here, which is Frozen Sea, which will be quite smooth and easy, onto this, which is Bathurst Island. Now, there could be a couple of ravines and so on. It's quite mountainous here. But once we've got across there, there's a checkpoint here where fuel has been dropped for us. Don't need that. Obviously. Dog um, food, can of meat. But I'll do. Yeah, a little yeah. bit of all that sort of stuff. Um, and then we go again across Frozen Sea, which should be fairly easy, except maybe for the odd pressure ridge which has been built up by the force of ice coming down from the north, and maybe the odd ice boulder field or so on. Then we continue, we have to skirt around this island, but we cross the land here, and the magnetic north pole is there, approximately 400 miles away. Good. Any questions? No. But what you're saying is, we leave here and go north mm. for a bit. Pretty much, yeah. What I'm interested in is, what's that area called as we cross Bathurst Island? Oh, the uh, Reserve Nationale de Faune de Polar Bear Pass. Why is that it is... called Polar Bear Pass? Okay. In my mind, it's a pass full of polar bears. That's exactly what it is. If we've made it to there, we're in with a good chance. But there is still, of course, the possibility that, well, as much as 100 yards from our goal, we fall through the ice. So forgive me, but there's only a very remote chance that either of us, any of us, make it. Yes. Yes, it's really a question of what death do you fancy most? Do you want to be polar the, bear poo or fish poo? The sitting in the car, desperately scrabbling at the windows, trying to get out, That's while... Nice. What did we decide? Would we freeze to death or drown first? I, I would... I think we will freeze to death in the act of drowning. No, I think you'll drown. And then first. you'll be like, give me, he's been practicing his face he's going to pull when he dies. That's one of them. Try another. <laughs> he has. I'm he's sure. worked out he's his faces. He's practiced all the Look, different faces. The thing about death out here is that once you're dead, you freeze. I want my body to be found wearing the appropriate expression. <laughs> Gentlemen, we start at dawn. Wasn't so sure. Oh, hell. He is huge. I mean, look at this. It's about twice the size of my mitten. Did you know, according to the ancient Inuit people, for every inch in length of its footprint, it's a foot in its length? That's big. That's that is big. Twice the size of you. And they can smell you from 40 miles away. Should we get back in the car? <laughs> <laughs> With things going so well for us, I tried to get James to buy into our expedition. Or are you actually looking for bears over there? Because I can't run. They look cosy, don't they? Which is 
unbelievable, but they're very clever. There's a lot of stuff going on. This coat, these are long guard hairs. They've got lanolin and grease on them. They shed the snow so they don't get all clagged up. But then underneath, he's got a second coat, these short, fluffy hairs. But they're not just fluff, they're hollow, each one. So they trap it warm air from his body. They're like a million tiny little duvets on him and they work. In fact, they work so well, they get too hot and they have to cool their blood by sending it down to their pores. And on the way down, it's super cooled and goes back around the body. So he has trouble, in this temperature, keeping cool. Mercifully, though, the ice eventually thickened. What has happened is we're doing many more miles and miles thanks to wheel spin. So we're actually doing two or three times the distance we'd anticipated. To make matters worse, we have to find the fuel somewhere out here. And all I've got to do that is Captain's sense of direction, relying on satellite navigation, which we know from how it works in England, does not function properly. Relax. It doesn't. Very close to empty. I find myself envious of Hammond at this point. Well, you could run out of dog food. Yes, you could actually could run out of these big biscuits. What if he's got Winlock dumps all over the place? Problem with the dogs, they don't work. It doesn't work as a form of transport. It would be easy to carry my stuff on my back. I mean, most of the sledge is full of dog food anyway. If I just carried my tent, my socks, I could do that. And then there's the fact that every single morning when you get up, you set off and they immediately have to park their breakfast at you or all over the lines that you then have to untangle. It's... I love dogs, I do. Not for this. It's a stupid idea. Tomorrow, we hit the boulder field, okay? 